Hi there, my name is Will and I'm a developer advocate at Kestra. I'm going to be walking you through how to create HTTP requests directly in Kestra. Now, in order to do that, we need to first understand what a HTTP request actually is. So let's jump into it. Put simply, a HTTP request is a message sent between a client and a server. Requests can both send and request data with common methods often known as get, post, put, and delete methods. We can use these directly inside of Kestra to interact with third-party systems to do powerful automations. Every time you make a request, you will receive a response from the server. Now this response will contain a few different bits that will be helpful for understanding what we can do next. The first thing is a status code. This will tell us whether it was successful or it failed or something else. This is super useful for being able to narrow down what went wrong. A couple of common cases are status code 200, which means okay, as well as 404 not found. So you'd often see that one when you go to a web page that doesn't exist anymore. Along with status codes, there are also headers and both requests and responses have these. These are really useful for being able to package extra information into your request and response, such as what client the user was using, as well as what kind of content you're sending. The last thing to note is a body. Now, not all requests and responses have bodies, but these are super useful for being able to package data into your request or response to send to the other end. So for example, if you are sending data to a server, you can package in data to that body, such as maybe a username and an email address if you're adding a new user to a system. Um, or if you are making a get request to receive data, you might find that that get request will return a body of information that will help you do what you need to do. Now, let's have a look at a few examples of these requests in action and how we can use them. Now, there are multiple ways that you can make requests. One way is using your web browser. However, this can be a little bit fiddly if you're trying to make very specific requests by changing the headers and providing a body, which is where Postman, which is what we have here, can make things a little bit easier. As you can see here in Postman, I'm able to specify that I want to make specifically a post request and I want to add this URL and I can provide it with a specific JSON body as well. So if I click on body, raw, select the JSON type and I can provide this body. Now using dummyjson.com, we can sort of make fake requests to help us practice and figure out how this works. And so for making a post request, I want to add a new item and it's specified in the documentation that I should add a title and then name whatever I want. So in this case, I wanna add a Kestra pen to the products list. So in order to do that, I just need to press send. And as we can see here, this is my response at the bottom here. I get my status code 200 and I can actually see the ID that it has assigned to my product. I can also see the headers too, which is really, really useful. You can also make requests directly in the terminal as well using a command line tool called curl. Now this is really useful if you wanna be able to make requests super easily without having to really do anything else. In this example here, I'm able to make a post request by using the argument dash X to specify the method I would like to use, followed by the URL I want to send to. I can also specify headers with dash H. So in this case, I want to specify the content type to be application JSON. And then lastly, I can provide the body with dash D. And so here I've got the same body here. So if I press enter, we'll get the same response we got in Postman, which shows the new ID for our product. Now, these tools are really useful, but they don't really allow us to take it that step further and allow us to automate and chain together as part of a full workflow. So let's jump into Kestra and have a look at how we can make these requests in Kestra. Jumping into Kestra, we've got an example here of how to make a GET request. What we can do here is use the plugin type HTTP request, and this will allow us to make all of the requests that we are looking to do. First of all, we'll make a get request. And so we can see here that this has the property method, which we have set to get. And it also has the URI here, which is set to our HTTP destination. Now, once it has made this request and we have received our response body, this will be able to pass on to our next task, which is a log. And we can just simply just print that to the logs. So let's execute that and have a look at the output. And as we can see here, this provides all of that data, but there is a lot going on there. So let's make our lives a little bit easier by going to the outputs tab 
and we're going to click send data and we're going to render our expression. So simply I can just type in the same expression that we put into the logs like so. And when I click render, we can see the JSON as we would expect. And so we can see all of the items from the products JSON. Now taking the same example we used in Postman and Curl, we can take that into Kestra as well. So here I have a post request. All I've had to do here is change the method type to post, as well as add a content type of application JSON like we did in Curl, and then add our body. And in this case, I've set the body to be an input so we can change what that item is at execution. So if I wanna change this, I can make this a pencil like so, and we can press execute to see our desired output. And as we can see here, just as expected, it has added Kestra Pencil to the products. As you can see, very similar to how we did it in Postman and Curl, but the key difference here is we're able to pass that output onto a future task, in this case, a log task, giving us lots of flexibility. In this next example, we've got a put request. Now, this is really useful if you want to be able to update fields on the server. Now, the key thing with a put request is it replaces the entire entity, not just a single field inside of it. So what we're going to do here is update a product, but it's going to update the whole product, not just one of the fields of it. So let's update and add a new field here, which is the iPhone 10, because when we look for product number one, it gives us iPhone 9. So let's update that to iPhone 10. And when I execute again, I can use that input to change what we're going to send. And we can see here that when we send it, we get the output to say that it's been added as the iPhone 10. And we can see that the put request has worked successfully. Lastly, we've got a delete method, and this is useful if you want to be able to delete things from the server. Now, very similar to our other examples, we're using an input here, and we've changed the method here to be delete. Now, this one looks most closely aligned to our get request, as there is no body involved. But the key thing with our input is this allows us to specify which product we want to delete. And I have then used that dynamic value inside of our URI. So when I press execute, we are required to provide an ID. I can provide the ID of one in this example, and then that will delete ID one from the products list. So we can see here the ID one, which was the iPhone has now been successfully deleted. And we can actually go to the outputs tab if I press send data and we again type our output, we can easily see that is deleted is set to true. And that means that the request was successful. So hopefully that gives you a nice overview in how to use requests directly inside of Kestra. This is super useful if you want to be able to get data, up-to-date data, and then be able to hand it off to either a Python script or maybe an SQL query to be able to process it and get a more cleaner output for what you're trying to do. If you do have any questions, let us know in the comments, or if you haven't already, join our Slack community where you can chat with us there. Otherwise, I will see you in the next guide.